そしてなんといっても今回一番の盛り上がりを見せていたのがこちらポケモンコンセプトでポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポケモンポ And this wasn't just a peek or a trailer, as trainers could actually play a demo of the Gen 2 games and experience the wonder of Pokemon Gold and Silver for the first time. With its adorable roster of new starter Pokemon, Chikorita, Kurusu, and Honoguma? I have a feeling we're not in Johto anymore. Despite the Gen 2 games apparently being close to 80% complete at the time, the Space World demo of Pokemon Gold and Silver was vastly different from the games that ended up releasing almost two years later. Some Pokemon look slightly or entirely different from their final versions, and certain creatures even ended up getting completely removed from the final games. A lot of towns and characters were also not like their final counterparts. But perhaps the biggest change was that these games were originally meant to release on the classic Game Boy, not the Game Boy Color, which hadn't even been announced at the time. Different sources claim different reasons, but regardless what the actual cause may have been, Pokemon Gold and Silver ended up getting delayed, and during this time, completely overhauled, leaving the Space World versions of Pokemon Gold and Silver apparently lost forever. That is until May 26. 2018. Out of absolutely nowhere, an anonymous internet user released the ROMs of these elusive Space World demos to the world. But how exactly did this Anon obtain these long thought to be lost treasures? Well, back in March of the same year, an individual hacked into Nintendo's internal network, and among the files discovered happened to be the 1997 prototypes of Pokemon Gold and Silver. This hacker would later leak the ROMs on Discord, and the internet quickly got to work uncovering every little hidden detail about these demos. And boy, were there a lot of differences. So, if you guys are excited for this deep dive into Pokemon history, don't forget to hit that like button, and without further ado, This is what could have been Pokemon Gold and Silver. I briefly mentioned that these games were originally meant to release on the classic Game Boy, but they could also be played in color using the Super Game Boy attachment, which is actually how people at Space World got to experience it, so of course that's how I'm gonna play it too. So, after a brief introduction from Professor Oak, the demo drops you straight into the starting town. No choosing your name or gender here. Even your starter Pokemon gets randomly selected for you. On my first playthrough, I happened to get the fire starter Honoguma, which roughly translates to Flame Bear. The other starters you can potentially get are Kuruzu, which literally just means cruise, and then there's Chikorita, which looks exactly how it does in the final version. There's some supposed beta artwork of the starters floating around the internet that show a slightly different version of Chikorita with no legs, but it turns out these are actually a fan's drawings of what he remembered them looking like after playing the Space World demo. So it seems Chikorita was the only starter finalized at this point in development, except for one little difference with its middle stage evolution. What the hell is even、Don't、that?、Kill. I'm really not sure what Game Freak were cooking with this design, especially considering how Meganium looked the same as it does now. Thankfully, we don't have to look at this abomination much longer, since none of the starters or wild Pokemon you catch in this demo are able to evolve. To make sure people at Space World didn't hog the controller too long, these demos had a few other restrictions in place. For example, you can only heal using potions as PCs were inaccessible and Nurse Joy will flat out refuse to help you at the Pokemon Center. If all your Pokemon happen to faint, the game will actually boot you back to the title screen. And did I mention you can't save? Here I thought Nuzlocks were brutal. So, with all this in mind, I finally started my adventure in the prototype Johto region. This place isn't New Bark Town, though. Instead, we find ourselves in Silent Town, and the demo lets us explore the whole first route known then as Silent Hills. Wonder why they changed that name. Data miners were able to extract the entire map of this beta region, then known as Nihon, which is actually one of the formal names of Japan. And upon closer inspection, you might realize this map literally is Japan. 
But the weirdest thing about this map is the fact that the entirety of Kanto has been condensed into a single city. More on that later. Something I was pretty surprised about is the fact this demo had a working day and night cycle despite the fact that most people playing it would, I'm assuming, be playing during the day cause like this was at a convention. Either way, different Pokemon do appear at night and I was quite shocked to find some pretty strong ones in the very first route. Like I definitely wasn't expecting Giraffarig which in the beta seemed to be cosplaying as one of my favorite childhood cartoons. Another thing that kinda surprised me were the version exclusive Pokemon. In gold, I kept running into Beta Hoppip, but didn't see a single one in silver, instead encountering this plump pink version of Meryl. And while I'm not the best at recognizing Pokemon cries, I'm pretty sure every single creature here sounds like Nidoran. Now, the trainers in this demo won't fight you unless you talk to them first, which is a bit strange. I don't think that was ever intended to be in the final version, but I guess in the demo they wanted to give players the choice if they want to focus on fighting or just catching Pokemon. Not that there's a lot of them, I mean, after this forest there's just one more area where you'll find your rival and promptly get kicked back to the title screen if you talk to him. So on my second playthrough, I was given the water starter, Kuruzu. I decided to try and fight as many of the trainers as possible and some of these people had some insane Pokemon. I mean, why does this guy have a slow king in the first route? Some other honorable mentions were this fire breather with Magby which was looking extra spiky compared to its final form. And then there's Ladyba which looked exactly how it does now, but green for some reason. In silver version, trainers also had different Pokemon, like the fire breather with Magby became a fisherman with Quillfish, and the very last trainer had a Donphan, which seemed to be basically finalized even this early into development. Not too surprising since it was one of the first Gen 2 Pokemon revealed in Pokemon the first movie. To wrap up my experience with the original Space World demo, I want to talk about a few oddities I experienced, or I guess things that just weren't quite finalized, like the EXP bar matching with the color of your HP. It just looks kind of weird and I'm glad they eventually settled on a totally different color for it. The type chart was also pretty weird, I mean with the introduction of two new types, I guess it took them a while to figure out exactly how they would interact cause at least in this demo, dark type was actually weak to normal while being strong against itself, steel types were actually immune to themselves and weak to water as opposed to fire type, which does make some sense, I mean steel has a tendency to rust but not always melt. I also caught a sun floor at one point and the demo apparently thought it was shiny? <laughs> I did some research and supposedly both Pikachu and Sunflora were hard coded to display the shiny sparkle animation when sent out in the demo. But while editing I noticed a different colored Sunflora to the one I caught, so was this a shiny? I also ran into a monochrome Rattata which didn't have the shiny sparkle despite clearly being differently colored from the standard Rattata, so is this a shiny? According to the wiki, shiny Pokemon are programmed into the demo but don't have that sparkly intro animation, so let me know what you guys think. Did I actually find a shiny or not? Nah? But of course everything you've seen so far is just the tip of the iceberg compared to the heaps of hidden data found within these Space World demos. Thankfully we can access all these juicy bits of Pokemon history through something known as the debug menu. There's a couple interesting options here such as a battle tester and a list of every Pokemon, but the one I most want to check out is Field. This is a tool developers use for bug testing that basically allows us to enter the game in god mode with access to the full Pokedex, the ability to walk through walls, and a whole bunch more features that never made it to the final gold and silver games. So let's dive into it. Alright, so if we hold B, we can walk at double speed. <laughs> we basically have running shoes in Pokemon Gold when they didn't even exist yet, but these are special running shoes because they also allow you to walk through walls, which is pretty insane. <laughs> can we walk through our mom? Oh my gosh, we totally can. That means we're now free to explore beyond the end of the demo, so let's walk right past our rival and into what would eventually become Violet City. Immediately you'll notice that while there are NPCs roaming around, you can't actually talk to them or interact with any of the signs or items in the overworld. By pressing B and start at the same time we can access another menu with some pretty cool options like teleport which lets you teleport to any city in the game. 
I happened to pick one with a spooky haunted forest vibe, and I'm pretty sure that's the Slowpoke Well, which I guess makes this the Beta Azalea Town. But again, there isn't much to do in these towns, and there are no wild Pokemon in the grass either, at least not around these parts. You might remember on the map we saw that one of the cities is called Kanto Region, and it just so happens to be directly east of the starting town. So I decided to check it out, and to my surprise, there were actually wild Pokemon programmed into this route. Of course, they were way too powerful for my level 8 starter, but still cool to actually see something working as intended. That wouldn't last for long though, as when I made it to Kanto, what I found was a mess of random buildings and roads leading to nowhere that barely even resembled the original region. It's nice to see the idea was already in place because revisiting Kanto is one of the coolest parts of Gen 2, but boy am I glad they expanded on it because this tiny version would have just been sad. I got bored of roaming around these ghost towns pretty quick and decided to mess around with the debug menu a bit more, which led me to find the bike. Why is it so slow though? For some reason, the bike actually feels slower than walking, but you can ride it inside buildings, which is pretty neat. F you, Professor Oak. I do what I want. Thankfully, this isn't the only way to get around Beta Johto, because we also have a skateboard. Oh god, what's happening? Oh jeez. Uh... So it seems the skateboard was a bit broken at this point, and the only way to control it was by holding down the B button. Then it's actually kind of cool zipping around the region on something other than the bike. It's a mystery why the skateboard was cut from the final games, but I think it could have worked as like a post-game exclusive that lets you jump up ledges, or just to set Ethan apart from the other main characters. But that about wraps up my adventures in Debug Land, as everything else was kind of just empty and clearly unfinished, so... I went back to the main menu and decided to finally check out what you've all been waiting for, the mini games. Okay, maybe not what you were expecting, but still worth checking out as the Space World demos had a bunch of mini games that probably for good reason ended up being cut from the final versions. First up is Pokemon Poker? I can see why this was cut since Game Freak would eventually move away from promoting gambling to kids, and I have no idea how to play poker, so... Moving on, we have this sliding puzzle game, which likely inspired the similar puzzle found in the Ruins of Alf. This beta version felt way more complicated though, so I gave up pretty quick. Next we have a memory game that's pretty much what you'd expect. Apparently this game is still in the code of the final games, but was never used. I mean, it's pretty boring, so I kinda get it. There's also a Picross game, but like poker, I have no idea how to play, so... Interestingly enough, they did eventually make an official Pokemon Picross game, so go play that if you want. Finally, we have the classic slot machines, which did make it into the final games, but were eventually laid to rest in the English versions of the remakes, because again, kids gambling, no bueno. It's okay, Voltorb Flip is better anyway. But there's actually a hidden 6 minigame that can only be played by waiting long enough on the title screen, which thanks to super speed means no time at all. In this game you play as Pikachu and continuously run and jump to collect musical notes. Despite how simple it is, somehow this was the most fun out of all the minigames, so I can see why most of them ended up getting scrapped. Anyway, it's actually time for what you've all been waiting for, this time for real. Let's check out the full Pokedex of Beta Gold and Silver. The full list of every Pokemon can be accessed from the main debug menu, and while you do get a back sprite, there's no description or types here. So I definitely prefer going into field mode and just booting up the Pokedex. 151 should be Mew, which means the next Pokemon after is Chikorita. Still have no idea what they were thinking. Let's check out Honoguma's evolution. That's pretty freaking cute. And then the final form is actually super sick too. What? I want to say I might like this more than the Cinderquill line. Here's the water starter though, which is definitely giving Poplio vibes, but its evolutions definitely lean more towards a Plesiosaur or Loch Ness Monster inspiration than Sea Lion. And I believe they all remained grass, fire, water type, just like the final starters. 
One of the most notable differences in this dex is the ridiculous amount of baby Pokemon. Like I know this generation introduced the concept of Pokemon eggs and breeding, but still there were way too many babies. And for Pokemon that definitely didn't need pre-evolutions. Oh my god, okay. See if Cleffa looked like this in the official games, I could definitely see its ties to outer space a lot more. Then we got Pichu, who was looking a little extra round, but then again so was Pikachu. Really? A baby Paris? As if Paris wasn't pathetic enough already? Okay, I shouldn't say that because in Legends Arceus, Paris are crazy. I thought this was a pre-evolution of Ditto, but apparently it's a pre-evolution of Grimer. I mean, it is cute at least. Oh my god, is that a Goldeen pre-evolution? <laughs> Why? <laughs> then we got Beta Mime Jr. I don't think that was its name at this point, but it's just so silly looking. It's like something out of Adventure Time. Look at his silly little face. A few of the evolutions were pretty laughable too. Like the alternate Bellsprout is freaking hideous. I am glad that thing didn't make it into the final games. I believe this is supposed to be a Ditto evolution, which again is just like, why would Ditto ever evolve? It's such a gimmicky Pokemon that I don't know why it would need an evolution. But there were also some evolutions that really impressed me. Whoa, 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 hold up. You're telling me Overquill was planned since all the way back in Gen 2? It's a pure water type, even though it has a little lightning bolt on its forehead. Weird. Though we did eventually get Surfetch, this beta version known as Madame has a totally different vibe going. It could have even been a split evolution, like male turns to Surfetch and female into this. Wait a minute, what? Was Pinsir originally meant to evolve too? That's sick. Actually looking at it, this might have been the inspiration for Heracross. Oh my god, is that Blissey? Well, it certainly looks more like a fairy type. I'm gonna need someone to explain to me what they were thinking with Porygon 2. Supposedly, it looks like the mascot of Mr. Donut, which is a popular donut chain in Japan. I, I don't think that was the inspiration here though. It's just really weird. There's a few Pokemon that just look kind of different. Remoraid looks more like a gun, which I think was the point. Like that part of it is supposed to look like a revolver. And Octillery definitely looks more like a tank here. Oh, Beta Tyrogue. Dude, I actually really like this concept. Maybe not as Tyrogue, but just as a standalone fighting Pokemon. It's just really cute. But its evolution, I'm not so sure about. I believe the Hoppip line was originally meant to look more like cats, with their Japanese names all containing the word Neko, which means cat. You can definitely see it in their faces. Oh my god, Beta Politoed! I love this guy! Like, I actually wish... Well, no, I do like how Politoed ended up looking, but this also could have been a Pokemon. We also have Snubble, which was actually a pure psychic type at the time, and didn't have an evolution. And finally, we have the beta Pokemon that I wish made it into the final games. This seal is really interesting because it was actually meant to be the first water and fire type, which of course we didn't end up getting until Gen 6 with Volcanion, and that's a legendary, so the fact we could have had a water fire type since all the way back in Gen 2 is really interesting to me. Ooh, I heard about this little fish though. It's like a sunfish Pokemon that evolves into this shark that was supposedly a scrapped idea from Gen 1 but was also scrapped from Gen 2, so I guess it just wasn't meant to be. I don't know why it evolves into this thing though, like the shark was way better. It did not need another evolution. Oh my gosh, this is probably the cutest unreleased Pokemon to this day. And its evolution is even more adorable. I mean, I guess it looks a little too close to the base form, but with some slight adjustments, I could totally see this being in an official game. Now, despite looking like a ghost type, I believe this is actually a dark type pre-evolution to Girafferig, which is where its whole two bodies thing comes from. This is two little ghosts attached together at the hip or tail. This one is actually a pure dark type that ended up getting scrapped, but we did later get a dark type cat Pokemon all the way in Gen 5. I gotta say I kind of like this design more just because it's cuter. I've never been a huge fan of Purloin, but I believe this is a pure ghost type based on voodoo dolls, which is a bit of an iffy inspiration for a Pokemon. Then again, haunted dolls do exist. Oh, this is a really interesting one. It's basically the shell on Slowking's head is its own Pokemon. And there's official art depicting this, so it might be the closest to canon out of all these beta designs. Oh, and it's called Turban. You can probably guess why. 
Known in Japan as Wolfman, this would be my runner up for beta Pokemon that I would want to be real. And finally, we have the legendary dogs or legendary beasts, whatever you want to call them. Rai, N, and Sui. I don't know why they only had half their name at the time, but the designs are actually pretty fire. Raikou kind of reminds me of Luxray, and tastes pretty cool too, giving a fox-like vibe. And Suicune reminds me of that one character from Full Metal Alchemist. If you know, you know. And finally, we have a Grass-type Legendary Beast. Nope, it's actually an evolution. So this is basically Beta Leafeon, two generations before it would actually end up coming out. But I wonder how this would have changed the future games. Like, would we have gotten even more evolutions in Gen 4? Or maybe Glaceon would have never existed. Now, if you like any of these beta Pokemon and wish they were in an actual game, I have some good news for you. With the demo being so clearly unfinished, attempting to play it like a normal Pokemon game was basically impossible. This made some people wonder what a finished version of the Space World demos could have been like, and eventually inspired a ROM hacker by the name of Level 3 to create their own game. With sprites pulled straight out of Space World, features from the demo ROMs being fully implemented, and all 251 Pokemon obtainable in a single file, Pokemon Super Gold 97 was born. This ROM hack is without a doubt the best way to experience the original Space World demo as a fully playable game. However, there was eventually a successor. Using Pokemon Crystal as its base, another fan would create Pokemon GS97 Reforged, which of course meant more advanced graphics and remastering of certain gameplay elements to make the whole experience feel slightly more polished. All three of these ROMs offer a unique way to experience the wonder of these Space World demos, and as always, you can find the links to download and experience these games for yourself in the description below. But there's one last little detail to talk about before we wrap up this retrospective. Two years later, Pokemon Gold and Silver would return to Space World with a brand new demo. Now, at this point, the games had been totally revamped for the Game Boy Color and pretty much complete compared to the 1997 demos, but there were still a few interesting differences to the final games. This is where the infamous Beta Wooper comes from, which did sort of eventually inspire Claude Sire. Well, at least that's my headcanon. Azumarill was gold for some reason, which did end up being its shiny palette. Oh my god, I just realized this is Beta Sunkern. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Teddy Ursa was definitely a lot simpler than its final version, and Sneasel still wasn't quite finalized, but they were getting closer. I mean, not really, but finally we have Celebi. I can definitely tell they wanted to recreate the mystique of Mew, but its beta design was so far from what we ended up getting. It almost reminds me of Sigilith, like the spikes on its head. Overall, a lot more twisted and Lovecraftian looking. I was originally just going to play one of the ROM hacks for this video, but quickly fell down a rabbit hole researching these mysterious demos and really enjoyed seeing how some of these beta Pokemon eventually made their way into future games. So let me know what you think of these hidden gems of Pokemon history. Are there any other beta Pokemon you wish could be made official? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.